Hi, this is Representative Bill Heisinger of Michigan's 2nd District. Each week I get thousands of letters, emails, and phone calls from constituents across the district. Today, this is what we got in the mail. They're asking for help with federal agencies, sharing their opinion on how I should vote on upcoming legislation, and finally, certainly telling me if they agree or disagree with a vote I already made. I make it a priority of my office to be sure that you get an answer each time you write, call, or email. I see many of these letters each week, and I wanted to start a series of mailbag videos where I can answer a few of them live on the air. You'll still get a written response, don't worry, so that you can see what I'm being asked and maybe hear the answer to your question. Tune in at youtube.com slash repheisinga to see if I've answered your letter this time. Today, we have two letters about the budget and the spending process. A little background. Almost 50 days ago, the House passed a bill funding government through the end of the year while cutting $100 billion. We are still waiting to see what Senator Reid and the Senate's going to do, but they keep saying that they just don't want to spend that or cut that much. I believe that it's not the right way to help restore our nation's fiscal sanity, but we want to hear from you. Well, first is from Cecilia Farrell of Holland. She writes, Dear Representative Heisinga, the importance of a social safety net cannot be overstated, and housing is a vital part of that safety net. The proposed cuts to housing programs will only exacerbate this problem. It is irresponsible to burden vulnerable people with onerous budget cuts while increasing defense and homeland security spending. Responsible deficit reduction must consider cuts to military spending and new ways to raise needed tax revenue from those who can afford to pay. Well, we do need to provide help to our communities. I, I do believe that's true, but it must be an all of the above approach. It needs to be me, you, all of us as a community, volunteers, and then our local and state governments as well. We must cut spending on the federal level or we're gonna face even more dramatic cuts, I'm afraid. I agree that everything, including defense spending, that doesn't affect our troops in the field needs to be on the table. Many programs will have to be reduced or altered from a government first type of a funding scheme. Now we can do these cuts in a thoughtful way. Now I think it's ineffective or wasteful programs that need to be targeted first. All right, well thank you Cecilia. The next letter comes from Patrick Looney of Bear Lake, Michigan. He says, Families and businesses across America are having to tighten their belts and it seems that Washington DC is on an out of control spending spree. While the current $1.7 trillion bu uh, budget deficit in Washington is inexcusable, unacceptable, and intolerable. Well, Patrick, thanks for writing and quite honestly, you're right. I agree. DC is on an out of control spending spree and that's why we're in a debt crisis. In fact, I'd like you to go to my website and check, it, check that out. We've got a number of charts and graphs and those types of things that you can see firsthand what's going on. You know, this debt crisis really threatens our job growth, our national security, and our sovereignty. And not talking about what's going to happen with our children and our grandchildren. We need to do what we can to be sure that we cut spending in a thoughtful manner, however, as we talked about before. I've already elected to cut billions of dollars in government spending by voting for the uh, HR1, the continuing resolution that was going to take that spending down $100 billion. It saved tens of billions of dollars by ending a couple of very ineffective housing programs. And I sit on the Financial Services Committee. We went over those extensively. And most of those programs, frankly, were never even accessed. Now, we voted to cut our own office budgets by 5% as well. And when I voted to repeal Obamacare, uh, that was going to save a tremendous amount of money over 10 years, and it's going to reduce the deficit by another $700 billion. But ultimately, entitlement retirement or in health security programs, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, must be reformed. They have to. It's my hope that once we pass this year's budget, the one that you're hearing about all the arguing, uh, arguing about, well, when we pass this year's budget, we can begin to look at that long-term fact-based conversation on how we're going to change the trajectory of spending in these programs here in Washington. Well, thank you for writing. We appreciate your thoughts, and we'll see you next week.